Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today I'd like to talk about something that causes a ton of confusion amongst physicians. Why certain orthobiologics are tissues and why certain orthobiologics are drugs. So the regulation we're talking about is 21 CFR 1271. If you land on one side off on the left, that's the practice of medicine or a simple 361 online tissue registration. If you land on the right, that's a cell drug requiring extensive clinical trials and many years of approval process. So as far as use of tissue, it's broken into homologous and non-homologous. Homologous is defined very narrowly as the exact same use uh, in the body as clinical. Non-homologous is obviously not doing that. Processing is either minimally manipulated or more than minimally manipulated. And source, as you can see on the left, if it's autologous or used in IVF or an autologous graft or a living whole do donor, that's gonna be on the 361 tissue side or the practice of medicine. If it's a donor tissue that has living cells that participate in the mechanism of action, that's going to be on the cell drug side. So now let's look at some things and see how they classify. So if we look at bone marrow concentrate, we can easily classify this now. We know it's autologous, so that's pretty easy. It is minimally manipulated. Uh, and with regard to homologous, non-homologous, for the most part, i.e. cartilage repair, uh, fracture healing, involvement in tendon healing, it's going to be homologous because it participates in those things in the body. So it's going to go off to the left here. So if we talk about enzyme digested fat or stromovascular fraction, it's going to be a little different because now all of a sudden this is more than minimally manipulated based on the current regulations. Uh, it is autologous. And the problem is that belly fat, for instance, doesn't really participate in cartilage, cartilage healing. So that's going to be non-homologous. So it's going to go off to that right side. Now let's look at a fat graft here, because based on the recent regulatory decisions, it's considered homologous for orthopedic use because it's providing structure in the body, structural support and cushioning, and it's being used that way from an orthopedic standpoint. It is minimally manipulated and it is autologous, so it's going to be firmly on that left side under practice of medicine. Now let's look at finally uh, amnio and cord blood products that are claiming viability. You could really go either way on homologous or non-homologous solely based on the concept that uh, let's say fluid might supply structural support uh, obviously in the body from the donor as well as in the knee. Uh, it is minimally manipulated, so we've got that. But if you're claiming viability, it's a donor tissue that has living cells that participate in the mechanism of action. Therefore, it moves on to the 351 cell drug side. So I hope you, that's given you some sense of how all of these different things are classified. For more information, uh, see Regenix.com and have a great day.